Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. All right, so we are gonna get caught up on some of our indie pattern releases in September. So I am using uh, Helen's HelensClosetPatterns.com who does a weekly feature on her blog called Wednesday Weekly where she um, links to all of the uh, new patterns. So starting with Seamwork Magazine, so they come out with two patterns every single month. I love seam work. Um, their patterns really are like a, just kind of like a jumping off point for lots of creativity. So good for beginners as well as those of us who are more experienced. So first up they have the Ace. Uh, with only three pattern pieces, this fitted funnel neck top is a breeze to sew. The Ace top is perfect for layering under dresses or pinafores or wearing solo tucked into pants or paired with skirts. Sew it up in your favorite knit fabric, such as jersey, rib knit, merino, French terry, and sweater knits. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I like the little, like, grown-on neck situation. That's cute. It's like a turtleneck, but not so constricting. I'm sure there are some of you out there who will, like, refuse to wear turtlenecks because you feel like you're being choked. But this one's a little bit more loose and, I don't know. It's nice. I feel like this fabric's a little bit lighter than this one, so you can kind of see the drape in the black better. There it is, tucked in. That's cute. I love black and this like burnt orange together. And then there's the pattern. Line drawing. Really straightforward. All right. Next up, they have the Bryn, which I'm assuming they're in intending for these two things to go together. So the Bryn dress is one part shift dress, one part pinafore. The sleeveless shift style is fully lined and complemented by a scoop neckline and French darts. I love French darts. The dress closes with an invisible zip for a nice fit at the bust and waist and has fisheye darts in the back, yes, for shaping. <laughs> Wear it alone, layer with a jacket or cardigan or style it layered over your favorite button up or turtleneck. Medium weight wovens, denim, twill, canvas, suiting, corduroy, and faux suede. Yeah, I. I can see that. Here's the French dart. Aren't they beautiful? And look at, you can even see, you can just see the shaping in the back here without even really looking at the line drawings. So cute, perfect, perfect fit. Doesn't look this fabric pressed very well though. That looks a little, <clears throat> and then there it is with the uh, ace top underneath it. I don't know about this. I think this fabric's a little funky. Maybe like too heavy weight of a denim or something. There you go. And it has facings. So that's nice. No bias bindings or anything like that. Perfect. Both, both of those are super cute. Okay. Now Tilly and the Buttons came out with the indigo smock top and dress. Cute, comfy, and effortlessly stylish. The indigo smock has no fiddly fastening, so you can throw it on and go. Okay, indigo has a bodice shaped with bust darts, gently curved empire waistline, and floaty gathered skirt. Make it as a top with dipped hem ending at the low hip, or a knee-length dress with straight hem and pockets. Choose from three-quarter flounce sleeves or slim-fitting bracelet sleeves. You'll want to wear one every day of the week. All right, so they have it uh, styled here over jeans, like a top, like a tunic top. What's the neckline look like? There are the pockets. Still can't see the neckline. What do we think about this little ruffly thing? This looks a little, you know, nightgowny, but also romantic, you know? Oh, there's the neckline. So kind of, yeah, just a nice little scooped neckline. Yeah, I mean, cool nails. This is a little basic for tilling in the buttons. Am I wrong? I mean, I don't know. I just, I guess I kind of expect for her to do something a little bit more. Let's look at some line drawings. 
Yeah, okay, well. So you have an option of doing the frill or just a gathered seam. I mean, the frill is kind of cool, but I don't know. This is a little, a little basic to me. All right, here's, do we look at, uh, yeah, this means nothing to me <laughs> because, oh, here we go, U.S. Oh, man, okay. Well, there you go. It's like a U.S., it's like 30 inches bust up to 48. Then the hip goes from 33 to 51. And the waist is pretty much negligible since it's so loose fitting. All right, we also have Itch to Stitch. Love her patterns. Uh, these are the Gobi Culottes. Trans seasonal time is difficult to sew for. Pants sewing is always the appropriate. Gobi Culottes is your friend. Okay, so high rise contour waistband, button fly front and waistband, front pleats with top stitching, slanted front pockets, back seams for shaping, can be lengthened or shortened for personal preference. Beautiful construction on them. I don't know that I like so many buttons. I also want to see them from the front. So it's like princess seams in the back. That's kind of cool. That's all I'm going to get. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know if it's for me, but maybe if they were, I don't know, the fabric was a little bit lighter weight, but I get that they were going for like a fall type fabric. So this canvas or twill or whatever it is, um, you know, is seasonally appropriate. I just don't love how it's very flary. And there aren't really any good photos front facing. So that makes me wonder if they look funny from the front. You know, like if you're not providing me with a photo, I mean, here, I guess there's this. But half of it's covered up and her legs are crossed. Who stands like that? Like regularly, you know. So anyways, I just feel like they might look a little bit funky whenever you're just standing normally. I feel like though, she's the one that does all of the pattern testing. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, okay. Now we're talking. So a lot of these people have lengthened them into pants, which makes sense. This is Michelle. They look great on her. When Michelle on Instagram. There's a little print with regular buttons. Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm worried that they're gonna look like on me where the gathers just pull in all the wrong directions because it's trying to accommodate for my backside. This is interesting. She must have graded and that's why you're getting this like I'm going to say clown pant. They don't look like clown pants, but you know the shape of them. These look lovely. So yeah, I think that there's a lot at play here. Uh, fabric choice seems to be critical. Here they are as shorts, short shorts. Um, fit is pretty crucial. Here it is in a lighter weight drapier fabric where you can see it looks a little bit more like a skirt. Um, so yeah, a little bit challenging, I think, to nail this one. <clears throat> but okay, so now we are looking at the second, second week in September. Here we go. Okay, so we've got a little jacket. We're going to skip the mini kids patterns because we don't discuss children's clothing here. 
we've got a tunic and shirt and a tank and dress. Okay. So this must be her inspiration, maybe? Or is this the actual make? Can we just get to the sewing pattern? This isn't a new pattern. Oh, so annoying. This is just a blog post of something she made, I think. This is the... This is really confusing. Yeah, this is just a blog post. Okay, moving on. All right, now we've got on the cutting floor Magnolia tunic and shirt. We need not, oh, here are the technical drawings. Wow, okay, so it's like an actual proper button down with the forward shoulders or like a front yoke, the back yoke. There's appears to be a little bit of gathering there. You've got a full collar with a collar stand, front placket. Like the whole thing's happening. And then it looks like long sleeves or short sleeves. And then this long version has a nice little slit on one side, which is really cool. All right, I know she has, gosh, these ads are sort of annoying. Um, I know she has like an Etsy or something. I'm just looking for the link. Oh, shoot. Okay, so here's the Etsy. So it looks like the pattern's on sale. I wonder if that's like a new release type of thing. But here are the versions. This is a long one. I like how it's like unbuttoned a little bit and the side slit. That's kind of cool, especially over jeans. This one looks to be without the collar stand though. So now I'm thinking that the illustration is wrong and there is no collar stand. It's just a flat collar, flat laying collar. I assume she made it like the pattern is and not like the illustration, which is, you know, a eh, little misleading. And then we have our uh, sizes 31 to 48 in the bust, 35 to 52 in the hips. So really generous sizing. So yeah, she's DG Patterns on Etsy, and then her blog is on the cutting floor, so it can be a little bit confusing. But I feel like she puts a pattern out every month, it seems like. All right, now we've got SBCC Patterns, the Picasso Tank and Dress. Again, a little on the basic side. Okay, the Picasso. The, oh, sorry, Pisco, not Picasso. Pisco tank is designed to be custom made for your petite proportions. Mix and match petite bodice pieces with average height torso and vice versa. Or if you're an average height gal, this is your chance to have an SBCC pattern that works for you. Pisco is a wardrobe staple that is very versatile in different looks, which is code word for basic. <laughs> I mean, this is like, this basically just means... This is basic. Um, use it as a workout top, a layering piece, or a slum fit cocktail dress. The princess seamed panels are a perfect opportunity for you to make it your own with color blocking intended for knits. Okay, so it's a knit top with princess seaming and like a little cap sleeve and a neckband. Or you can lengthen it into this dress. There's the back. 
This makes her look very wide here. I guess because she, maybe she's just so narrow here. I don't know. Yep, so then I think this is the dress and then the front and the back. Wow, look at all these measurements. Okay, I can't even read that. All right, um, so SBCC must be perfectly proportioned for petites. Skinny bitch curvy chick patterns. So yeah, that must be why there are so many different sizes. I've never seen one of their patterns before. Have you guys, did you find that you got a really great fit from it? I mean, I will say these fit models, they all look great. So, all right. Next up is week three, moving right along. This was from September the 18th and lots of fun stuff okay paper cut patterns released the entire ruby rubik's collection which is one two three four five six patterns so instead of putting that here and making this an incredibly long video i am going to do next friday's first impression friday will be just on the paper cut patterns rubik's collection deal so we're going to skip on to the sweater, this Georgie dress, and a midi skirt. So this is from Cashmerette. Cashmerette is for us curvy girls. This is the Tobin sweater. Cozy up with a Tobin sweater. This modern sweater and pattern is designed for curves with bodice starts and innovative cup sizing. View A features a split neck, sheet color blocking, and wide cuffs. View B has a cowl neck and swingy high-low hem, while View C is a classic sweatshirt sweater knits or soft french terry uh boiled wool blend knits are available from i guess she sells that fabric so here's one version so if you are a full busted gal this is going to be a very easy pattern for you to sew and it will fit well right out of the pattern right out of the envelope so here's the split neckline with the buttons like the model was wearing super cute Here's the cowl neck version with kind of a high-low hem, and then you've got a crew neck, kind of basic sweatshirt situation. Here's the cowl neck. She's a triangle shape, looks great on her. Here's the more basic version. Super cute. That looks great, and it does look very cozy. Yeah. I love all these. Over leggings. I like the styling ideas that she does here too. And this one's just really fun with the color blocking like she said. Pretty. Close above the hem. Lots of photos here. Oh, cute. Okay, back to the beginning. All right, there you go. So sizes 12 to 28 in three cup sizes, C, D, E, F, and G, H. So I actually don't fit into cashmere patterns on the top. Uh, my bust is not that large and neither is my waist for her like pants and skirt patterns. But for my hips and stuff, she does have great patterns for those of us with larger hips. So yeah, lots of information here. Oh, and reviews, cute, very cute. But yeah, if you're a busty gal, for sure check this one out. Okay, next up, sew your own Mary Quant Georgie dress. Exclusive to the v &A, this free, download, free downloadable sewing pattern shows you how to recreate the original Mary Quant design from 1962, the bold and beautiful Georgie dress. That's cool. So free pattern. That's great. It looks to be like a faux wrap with like a gathered, pleated, ruffle something or another. There's this too. Huge waistband with an enormous bow, which I love big bows. Um, what else? Yeah, here are all your sizes to download for free. 
and in the instructions. So yeah, it's a pleated neckline and they're using this, the little fork, you know, you turn the fork over and it makes the pleats. Um, okay. Oh, here it is on a model. This is obviously concerning. I'm not sure what's happening there. Oh, this is cool. This is the original. So, striped cotton dress with frill trimmed crossover bodice. Stripes are vertical on the bodice and horizontal on the gathered skirt and wide sash. That's neat that they say how the stripes should go. That's cool. Oh, and here's a bunch of testers. So, this, these all look great. The necklines look fine on all of these. Well, not this one. So yeah, just be sure to follow all the steps to make sure that you don't get your neckline stretched out any. This one looks like it did too a little bit. So it might also depend on the fabric. No, they all look pretty much like 100% cotton for the most part. It's really cool though and completely free. So there you go. This is like the um, some museum. V and A, what would that be? V and A, oh, Victoria and Albert Museum in London. That's cool. Very cool. All right. Next up is So Altered Style, relatively new pattern company. Uh, looks like they have made a gathered waistband skirt. Okay, the Melinda Midi is a simple take on a classic look. The Midi skirt has a full silhouette and gathered elastic waist, large front slash pockets. View A is fully lined with triple tunneled waistband made by sewing multiple tunnels with the main and lining pieces. The triple line of elastic is comfortable and makes for easy fitting. Yep, view B is unlined, features separate waistband with two inch elastic. So you can either do the smaller tunneled elastic which kind of gives it a little bit more of like an athletic waistband or you can do the full two inch wide elastic it also looks like this version has panels so you can um, sneak in some shaping if you need especially in the back okay here are their photos that i have to click individually so yeah that's the tunneled waistband Yeah, with the sneakers and the t-shirt, that's about right. Mm -hmm. And then here's the other one, but they aren't showing the waistband. Her sweater's covering it. So that's annoying. I'd like to see what the waistband looks like. But this is my pineapple fabric from the goji shorts that I made. <laughs> if y'all recognize that. So yeah, another kind of basic, which... I think what we have all learned by doing this together is that um, the indie folks can be a little bit on the basic side. So um, if you're new to sewing, that's great. I think that's how they capture you. Um, but if you've been doing big four for a minute, you know, then an elasticized skirt is really like, okay, I could probably draft that myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyways, and that's actually it. There were only three Wednesdays in September. Is that right? No, there's the 25th. So I guess maybe she skipped one. Hmm. Or it wasn't tagged properly. How else can I find it? So let's do Wednesday Weekly 180, 190. No, that is 190. So she skipped a week. I guess she took a week off. Yeah, back in Vancouver, feeling refreshed and energized. So I wonder if this one has the last week of September in it. Nope. Nope, I think we're going to start there with our Octobers. Okay, so that is it. Let me know what you guys thought of these patterns. I know there weren't a ton, 
Um, but uh, I thought there were some sort of cute ones mixed in there, but let me know what you thought. Did you maybe find a pattern company you uh, hadn't heard of before? Uh, see a pattern that you're gonna purchase? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you back here next week to discuss, a little teaser, the Rubik's Collection from Paper Cut Patterns. I will see you all very soon. Bye.